Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Hello. My name is EJ, and I'm back again with another art narrated time lapse video for us to, you know, take a look at, dissect, inspect, critique, maybe, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, this channel is all about art processes, and that is what we're taking a look at right now my art process. So. Anyways, before I go on and talk about some of my ideas for this particular piece where and where the idea came from in the first place, um, let's just go and talk about what's going on in Blender. Um, so in Blender right now, there's like a bunch of stuff going on. Um, this is actually an old Blender file that I have for an illustration that at this point in time, I'm still currently working on. Um, I do all these recordings early, um, most of the time. Some some I kind of do within a week or two of publishing it, but for this particular video, it's about at least two months ahead of time before I publish it. Anyway, so <laughs> my point is I'm working on this illustration called um, The Guardian. And this Blender file was initially part of of that illustration um i created this particular illustration or i created this particular blender file for that illustration guardian that i'm still working on this one however is a speed paint that i did for a prompt for environment of the week in conceptart.org i think it was for environment of the week um actually you know what i take it back i think it was um uh, in the environment of the week sub forum and the creature of the week sub forum decided to combine two prompts in one and I think that's what <laughs> was the inspiration for this particular idea man <laughs> I said I wasn't going to talk about the idea until later but anyways I'm already talking about it now so let's just proceed anyway so yeah the blender file was initially created for that um but for this particular one, this is just uh, an environment of the week prompt. Wow, yeah, I kept doing all these prompts for conspire.org, so I'm getting confused as to which one was is which one. Anyways, my whole point was that um, the Blender file was originally for another project, and then I ended up just grabbing it, modifying it um, to come up with this rendered scene that I have in Krita right now, which I'm using as a backdrop to um trace over my lines um and so that's what i'm doing right now that's what i'm going to be doing in the next few minutes is just doing this rough outline rough sketch on top of this 3d render that i have just to kind of help me out with perspective um this is the reason why i do 3d a lot it helps me with perspective and lightning um so yeah uh and then after that i'm gonna do like my whole initial coloring and really really messy coloring and then blocking and whatnot um but before i talk about that let's just go ahead and just talk about like the initial idea for for this piece since i was already start i already started talking about it um so yeah <laughs> ideas who where do they come from hmm it's always a mystery <laughs> but anyways um so the prompt for this is the weeping cathedral uh it's an environment of the week prompt um unlike the guardian the guardian was an environment of the week and creature of the week prompt uh, so it was like a combined prompt but this one was just an environment of the week prompt and when i first initially read the prompt like i was just empty with ideas like i can't i couldn't think of an idea on how to illustrate the prompt at all like zero clue um and the closest i could get to was um this phenomenon in the catholic church which i don't even know if a lot of people are familiar with this phenomenon but there's this phenomenon that uh, statues of Mary's are seen to be crying um, a, a lot of a lot of this phenomenon have been debunked um, uh, people sort of sort of figure out that it's just some anomalies in the building structure or something like the roof was leaking and it landed on her face and then it just made her look 
like she was crying or something but anyways crying statues was just about the only thing that i could think of to kind of illustrate that the cathedral is weeping so it's such a generic interpretation of the prompt um so yeah it's not it's not very out of the box in all honesty but you know where i went where i diverged and kind of went off on my own little tangent is that you know um i just have this tendency to illustrate like robotic figures <laughs> yeah, i just love it and so you know instead of just you know illustrating like a crying mary statue inside a cathedral to indicate that it's a weeping cathedral which is such a gener generic you know interpretation of a prompt i decided to just go off tangent and just make you know the crying statue a little bit more robotic you know and just out of the norm you know and so that's where the idea came from not only did i you know not only did i make it to where it's just like little tears but like i <laughs> totally exaggerated the tears to where it's practically a waterfall which you saw in the very beginning of the video you know like this little statue or the statue is just crying and whatnot so yeah that was my idea for it you know just go out and get crazy and wild with the interpretation you know just not be straight up you know traditional i guess i don't know if that's what i'm even looking for um so yeah that was my initial sketch and that's what you just saw me do was the initial sketch of this like robotic statue figure just crying to the point where the whole place is just flooded uh so yeah um there's some technical issues with this painting and you know i mean obviously the focus had been the statue uh but really what i really wanted to highlight was the three human figures that was at the very bottom of our feet which i don't even think people would recognize that they existed um my idea basically is this three soldiers are doing a patrol in this like really weird crazy land and they happen to come upon this weeping cathedral or something is like the basic idea and so yeah i drew three soldiers like approaching the statue and you could kind of semi see them in the sketch but i gotta be honest in the final illustration they just kind of get drowned out with you know all the details that i put in to the statue like the statue just ended up becoming like the focal point and whatnot uh, so I don't even know if people recognize that there's three soldiers right there. See, you could kind of see them right now uh, since there's only just one color and just a sketch. Um, so that's kind of like a technical issue of sorts because there's this confusion as to what is the focus on, on this illustration. Is it the statue or is it the narrative of the soldiers? And if I personally have... A choice it would be the narrative of the soldiers like what are the soldiers doing in this weird cathedral looking place so because uh, i'm all about the narrative and whatnot so if i have to redo it i would probably turn down all the dark areas like some more and like make it like uber dark so literally like the highlighted area of where the soldiers are where the shaft of light is hitting them like that would just pretty much just be the focus um if i have to redo it so yeah but as it is as of this moment it just stands like as a speed paint so yeah so that's like my quick critique of it you know um the colors i love the colors in this one um i it actually you know just going back real quick about what happened in the video i i threw in a bunch of random noise random color uh because this has been my process as of late um basically what i do is just um grab the random mech brush which kind of creates random mech shapes and i set the hue variation on it or i turn on the hue variation on that brush so that when i when i put down or when i lay down my strokes um it would just create random shapes and random colors and and then i blend them all because when i do the blending thing it kind of smudges all the color into this one general color 
you could kind of see it in the wall of the cathedral right now where it's just coming out to be just basic pink basically or basic purple dark purple dark pink um so yeah um the reason why i do the random color um is because sometimes you get really nice ex you get really nice results sometimes and this is one of those pieces that got nice results um and then I did actually another piece like about two months ago. Well, it would be two months ago by the time I published this. Um, robot painting, it, it just recently got published and everyone went nuts in the color. Like I, I kept getting a lot of comments in the color and everybody loved it, which <laughs> is so ironic because on on that particular painting i was all right with the colors you know because the thing with my technique is that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you know and it's just, like i wouldn't advise beginners to try and attempt my technique just because it's a pain in the butt sorry <laughs> if i if butt is a bad, bad word but it's a pain to try see I'm doing that right now I'm doing the random mech brush and I'm just throwing a bunch of colors I don't know why I did this three times in this illustration when typically I just do this once now but I'm doing it right now and you can see it and this technique is crazy like you kind of had to know what you're doing in a way to kind of just try and reclaim all the harmony back because when you throw in just like a random things like this sometimes it gets so messy that it, get, it gets so painful to try and bring everything back and that's what happened to my illustration that i published uh not too long ago too uh blue train surfaces for snacks and refueling like the colors in that one i just was not so happy with it. like it just it wasn't as good as i had thought it would be on my defense it was like the first year that i started doing this technique that i started experimenting with this technique so and there's a reason why that illustration didn't work out quite as well. Um, by the time I did this illustration, I kind of get a little bit of grips on it. I'm a way better at it now um, than I am before. But anyways, my whole point is that it's a lot of work to try and reclaim back the harmony, but it can be done. Um, I learned the technique from Peter Polak after his graphics, really great artist. You do need to check out his YouTube channel. Um, that's kind of where I get the idea from, you know, just throwing a bunch of random colors. And not only that, but Marco Bucci actually talked about that in one of his videos about how, you know, you need to vary your colors so that your painting doesn't look plastic. Because if you just, you know, when you do your shading and you just do red color and then a dark red for shadows and then a light red for the highlights of that object, what will end up happening is that object will end up looking like plastic. And yeah, if you're making plastic, sure, that's great. But if you're painting human skin, then you don't want the human skin to look like it's plastic. So there's a reason why it's a good advice, you know, to just throw in a bunch of colors. And a lot of these ideas came from like traditional painting techniques because, you know, when you do like oils or acrylics, sometimes your paint can get transparent that the undertone or whatever color you had put before the layer that you're working on, sometimes it shows through, you know, I had this one acrylic painting that I did where for some odd reason I did a green undertone painting, which is like not typically your case. Most people would do, you know, burnt umber for their undertone painting, like something that's a neutral color, but I decided to go for green. And so here I am painting this human skin, you know, and it was painting the butt to paint it, to paint over a green undertone, but eventually ended up working and actually ended up looking really, really good, especially with the green undertone. But anyways, my whole point of, of that is that there was like a mixing of colors that happens between different layers. And that's kind of like the idea behind this whole, let's just throw a bunch of random colors and then harmonize it later on. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like where my idea for this came from pretty much. Um, so yeah, <laughs> very crazy technique, but as soon as I throw in all those colors, I, I guess it's time for me to talk about what the process that's kind of had transpired in my illustration and what is still kind of going on in my illustration. Um, 
basically as soon as I throw in all my colors I go back with a blending brush which is what I'm doing right now he's you see me currently blending this column to the right and I'm gonna just blend some things out and you could kind of see me blend like the seating area where the choir would be typically in a church and then I'll just keep doing this all throughout the illustration until I kind of get this base paint to work on and as soon as I get my base paint um, then I start doing the details which is pretty much a repeat and rinse rinse and repeat process which is I delineate my edges just so that my shapes can read better I accentuate the shadows if the shadows just need a little bit darkening and I add highlights and I just do it through section by section in my illustration so yeah uh, but yeah, I'm currently just smudging right now and after I'm done with this, I'll be working on details.
have pretty much started detailing um and started my detailing process uh, you saw me work through the top windows and now i'm working in the back windows at the very back of the cathedral um i'm just kind of you know delineating my edges at this point sharpening the window so it doesn't look as fuzzy because that is one of the um net effects of doing the whole blending brush is that everything kind of gets fuzzy and so uh you kind of had to go back and just kind of reclaim some of the, your lost edges which is what i'm doing um yeah and again like i said i just repeat this process all the way throughout um so yeah um the statue um was probably like the last piece that I detailed. I was trying to remember like which section by section that I went through. And if I'm trying to remember correctly, I think I did the background first and then went ahead and did the choir area and then to the crypt. And then the statue was like the last thing that I illustrated. Um, so yeah, um, as for the choir area, there's kind of like this really weird looking um, there, there's a lot of, well, just going back, there's actually a lot of things that's not very noticeable in this illustration, I think. I mean, because again, like I had mentioned, the statue is just so predominant in the illustration that I honestly don't think a lot of the things that I put on there um, are readable. You know and don't ask me where i came up with my ideas for those because i mean i i just kind of just threw them in there like the crypts for chairs like i don't know where that came from that was kind of left field i, I thought that was kind of like really really creepy and i'm not really a creepy artist by any means because if you look through my portfolio i'm really just more narrative oriented like i'm all about the story behind and a, a painting and most of my stories are just like slice of life stuff you know i mean that's kind of typically what i do but every now and then you know i kind of think of like the sci-fi element stories to my illustration or i would think of sci-fi element stories to my illustration and so yeah that's how i come up with like really weird designs sometimes um but yeah the crypt it's not typically my thing, but I don't know where that came from. That was totally left field. The statues, the little mini statues that I kind of work on, I, you don't really see me work on it anymore. But those little uh, figures that has like those spiky things coming out of them, um, I originally envisioned them as statues. You could kind of see some that oh, well, I'm working on one right now. You see me work on that little figure. Um, so you see this figure is just kind of sticking out of the water i, I kind of thought of them as like those statues from doctor who um it's like doctor who's like nemesis or something uh the statues you know won't move if you're looking at them but at the moment you turn your back towards them they move right and so it's really really creepy enemy of doctor who uh from the tv series and so i kind of thought of those statues as kind of something like that um but they don't even really read very well because they're so small so this is what i'm talking about like there's just so many things in here that it's just so minute and so tiny that i don't think they register very well those little you know doctor who inspired statues i don't think people can read them very well and the crypts i don't even think people can understand that they're crypts you know i mean from afar it just looks like your standard pew sit seating arrangement or pew is that what it's called i'm not even sure if that's what it's called but you know those uh chairs that you sit at uh, in church i mean that's kind of just what it looks like from afar but then if you zoom in close they're actually very crypt or they're actually crypts you know they have all these crosses on top of them so yeah so i just put in all this little neat details to just kind of up the factor of the creepiness because of the, <laughs> this painting is kind of creepy in a way you know because it's a crying statue and maybe i'm thinking of like gothic um maybe that's what it is i have like gothic inspiration in my head um and maybe that's the reason why i have all this idea is swimming in my head or something 
It's always fun to psychoanalyze my own self after doing an illustration because sometimes it can get out there and I'm just like, what am I thinking, dude? Like, what what was going on in my head? And actually, I wrote an article about this. Half the time when I when I draw something, I really just don't think. I just go with the flow, you know. I see something cool and I go with it. And that's really what just happened here, you know. Um, the word cathedral in general kind of denotes gothic architecture, you know, and if you look at gothic ar architecture, some of them can get really creepy. Like if you think of uh, gargoyles, for example, on cathedral churches, that's kind of like left field, you know, because gargoyles are just really creepy looking. Well, I put it on a church, right? But it exists, you know, in, in gothic churches. So, um, so yeah, I guess that's like my train of thought as well, where it's just, you know, I just the word cathedral just triggered this whole gothic ideas in my head and I was just swimming with it. And then I put my own spin of making it all sci-fi looking. So that's where we are with this illustration. Okay, so this illustration is pretty much close to being finished. Um, as you can see, I'm just working on all my little minor details now. Um, I was wrong about the cathedral. I thought the cathedral was really the last thing I, I worked on, but it turns out that I'm actually working on what I originally wanted to be the focal area, which is just three soldiers. Um, you can tell that they're still fuzzy right now because I haven't worked on them. Uh, I'm working on the figures around them. But uh, clearly the soldiers were definitely the last um, the last thing that I detailed and whatnot. So yeah, um, I really like the colors in this illustration. It's one of my few successful, you know, random color thingy-majiggy that <laughs> ended up working very well for me. Um, I, I think a lot... Uh, of it is because of the water you know uh, I put in like just a basic well I threw in a bunch of random colors and it was just too chaotic that I overlaid this just one solid color of blue and I think that unified the bottom a lot just putting that one solid color on top of my random color noise at the bottom solidified that um, so yeah I think that helped a lot but anyways uh, thank you guys for watching this with me. Uh, I hope you learned a thing or two. I will be, I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Good night.